Now that we've seen a basic encoding, let's turn our attention to encoding integers. And we're going to talk about both unsigned integers, positive numbers, as well as signed integers, integers that can represent both positive and negative values. Let's start with a basic example of binary number representation. Here we see an 8-bit value represented by eight binary bits labeled B7 through B0, the most significant bit to the least significant bit. The reason we call them most significant and least significant is you'll notice that B0 is a coefficient on 2 to the 0 or 1. This represents the 1's column of the number. And B1 is the 2's column of the number. B5 is the 32's column. And B6 is the 64's column, and so on. A useful uh, formula to remember is that if we have an n-bit quantity, then the largest number we can represent is 2 to the n minus 1. In the case of 8 bits, with n equal to 8, that would be the number 255, namely 128 plus 64 plus 32 all the way down to plus 1. So let's take a look at a simple example of addition and subtraction uh, using basically the normal carry-borrow rules that we use for decimal addition and subtraction, only in this case, since we have base two numbers, we'll be doing things with only the digits 0 and 1. Here's an example, 63 plus 8 is, uh, of course, equal to 71. The number 63 is represented by these bits. The number 8 is represented by these bits. And you should make sure that that makes good sense to you. And when we add them up, you'll notice we'll do a 1 and a 0 is a 1. A 1 and a 0 is also a 1. 1, 0 again is 1. But now a 1 plus 1 in this column yields a 0 with a carry of 1. So we now add 1, 0 plus the carry of 1 yields a 0 again uh, by the carry of 1. So we do 1 plus 1 plus 0 again yields a 0 with a carry of 1 that ends up in this position. And this is the number 71, our result. To do subtraction, we do something very similar. Let's, take, let's say we had the number uh, 12 in binary, um, and we wanted to subtract 7. 7 is represented by 0, 1, 1, 1. And so if we do this subtraction, we would say 0 minus 1, of course, is a 1 with a borrow of 1. 1 minus 1 is a 0, and a 0 now because we borrowed earlier. A 0 minus 1 is a 1 again without, uh, and uh, we leave this as a 0, so the result is 0, 1, 0, 1, which is in fact equal to the number 5, what we'd expect. Okay, so that's the basics of addition and subtraction in binary. So let's do the natural thing for representing positive numbers. Uh, they're, going to rep they're going to correspond to all the unsigned integers of the same value. So in 8 bits, for example, we can go from the uh, hex 00 to the hex 7f and represent 127 different positive numbers. But since we need about half of them to be negative, we're going to save the other half from 128 to 255 to really be used to represent negative numbers. Uh, rather than those larger positive numbers. So we're going to use the high order bit, uh, that B7, to indicate whether a number is negative or not. And often that most significant bit is the sign bit. This is called a sign and magnitude representation. Let me give you a few examples. Here we have the number 0, and you'll notice that it has a 0 in the most significant bit. So it's non-negative because the sign bit is 0, and the value is 0. Here we have another positive number, a non-negative number, uh, where except for the sign bit, all the other bits are 1. That corresponds to the number 127. Okay. Now, the other two numbers in these uh, examples are both negative numbers. They have a 1 in the most significant bit and uh, can be used to represent, for example, a minus 5 in this case. This is the number 5 but we're saying it's negative, so we're going to basically just uh, use that sign bit to say whether we put a minus sign in front of it or not. In this case, we have minus 0, which gets into one of the problems with sign and magnitude notations. There's the two representations for 0. 
the first line here was the positive zero, this is the negative zero. Well, they're really both zero, so this kind of, well, this will cause some problems for us if we uh, use this representation. Okay, so let's talk about sine and magnitude negative numbers in a bit more detail. Here I'm showing a number wheel for uh, four bit binary numbers. It starts at zero, 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 and as we increment by one, we move around to one, 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 and of course, if we continue to increment, we'd go back to zero, 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 zero. Now, what I've also uh, noted on the outside of the circle is the number corresponding to each bit pattern. So you see here we have our zero, uh, one, two, three, all the way around to seven, and then we have the negative numbers uh, on this side with the first bit being a one. Right? So a minus one in binary is always represented by the uh, inside magnitude binary with a leading one for the sign and then a value of one for the remainder of the bits, okay, for the magnitude. All right, so the unfortunate side effect of this, as we've said, is that we have two values for, uh, two values that correspond to zero, a negative zero and a positive zero. So why is this an issue? Well, it makes math a little cumbersome. Let's take a look at a little example. If I do four minus three, that corresponds to the number four here, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 0, 0, 1, 1. And if we do the arithmetic for that, of course, we see that the value is 1. But now if we look at the, the 4 plus minus 3, which should yield the same result, we see that, in fact, 4 plus a minus 3 yields minus 7. Well, that's not the same as 1. Uh, so we now would have to worry about how, what order in which we do the additions and subtractions. Uh, this is not something we want to be dealing with when we think about arithmetic in our programming languages. So instead of using sign and magnitude numbers, uh, computer systems today use what are called two's complement negatives. And let's go back to that representation of a minus one. So instead of using uh, the sign bit at the front to uh, the most significant bit to just represent the minus sign in front of the one, what we're going to do is give that most significant bit a large negative weight. All right, remember each of the bits has a certain weight corresponding to the column that they're in. Uh, so bits zero through the second to last bit uh, r represent the values one, two, four, eight, 16 and so on. But what we're going to do is have the, 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 the most significant bit uh, represented as the W minus 1 bit, or in this case would correspond to that B7 we had in our previous uh, slide when W is equal to 8. It would actually add a, a negative weight to the number. In this case, the negative weight would be minus 128. 2 to the 7th uh, is 128, and then minus 128. So let's take a look at an unsigned number here, 1010. 0, 0. That corresponds to 1 times 2 to the 3 plus 0 times 2 to the 2, and so on, to yield the number 10 decimal. In 2's complement, 1010 0, 0 would be interpreted a little bit differently. You'll notice that now we have a minus 1 for the first bit, the most significant bit. All right, that's that large negative weight, in this case, minus eight. So that when we add this up, we see that this corresponds to the negative number six in base 10, um, using two's complement notation. So a minus one is represented as one, 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 right? Minus eight plus seven for the remainder. So that would add up to minus one. All right, so that looks uh, a lot like uh, we've solved our problem here because what we've essentially done is shifted our number wheel a little bit. So now the numbers are the same on the right hand side. <clears throat> we, you see we go from zero to plus seven, but the numbers with the leading one are now in a different order than they were before. We start at minus one up here, go around to minus two to minus three to minus four, <clears throat> all the way to minus eight. What's important to note here is that now we only have one representation of zero, namely all the bits are set to zero. 
and you'll notice that minus 1 is immediately adjacent to 0. So it looks like things can flow on a number wheel by doing uh, basic addition and subtraction and get that to work. For example, if I start at 2 and take three steps back, I do in fact get to minus 1. That wasn't the case with sine magnitude notation. The other nice thing about 2's complement notation is it's very easy to obtain the negative number from its positive uh, uh, magnitude. All I have to do is take a bitwise complement of, of the positive number and add 1 and that gives me the negative version of that original number. Interesting, um, interesting fact that makes it very easy to take the negatives of numbers. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at two's complement arithmetic in some more detail. What's nice about two's complement is the same addition procedure now works for both uh, unsigned and two's complement integers, so we only have to build one kind of adder in our processors. Let's take a look at the example four plus three. Here we have the positive number 4, the positive number 3. We do a straight addition and we get a result of 7. That works out well. On the right hand side we have minus 4 plus 3. Okay. You'll notice that when we add that up we get all 1's. That corresponds to minus 1. That's correct as well. Now let's take a look at the middle here. 4 minus 3, that's the example we did before. That should have yielded 1 and now with 2's complement numbers we have a 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0, but our minus 3 is 1, 1, 0, 1. And when we add this up, we get the result 0, 0, 0, 1. Of course, we do have a carry out of 1 that we're going to drop and uh, because we have our 4 bits of precision here. And uh, the result is 0, 0, 0, 1, exactly the value we expected to see. Uh, the dropping carry makes this modulo addition, so we say that this is addition modulo 2 to the w, or modulo, uh, one, modulo 256 in this case, with w equal to 8. Or in the examples here, uh, with w equal to 4, it's modulo 16. Why does 2's complement notation work out so well? Uh, well, let's uh, try to look at it a different way. Whenever we have a positive integer, we would like the negative number representation of that same integer uh, to always add up to zero if we sum it with the positive version. So let's take a look at the numbers 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, what do we have to add to that in order to get all zeros, right? So what we really want to be negative 1 is whatever bit pattern gives us that same result. And we know now that that, in fact, is the pattern all 1s which when we add will cause a carry to ripple down this entire sequence of ones to yield all zeros with a carry out of one that we'll be dropping and ignoring because we do modulo 256 arithmetic. In the case of the number two, we want the number minus two here. What bit pattern would yield that? Well, we'd expect it to have a zero here, so that zero plus zero would come out to zero. <clears throat> and then a one in the second position, so that one plus one is also a zero and then a sequence of ones to ripple that carry through. So a minus two looks like this value. Okay, And you'll notice that that's just the bit pattern of the number two complemented and then adding a one. So if we complemented every one of these bits, we would get one, 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 zero, one, but then when we add one, we would actually get this value here which is our minus 2. And then for 3, it's the same situation. The pattern, that the pattern that would yield all zeros looks like this, which you'll notice again is just a bitwise complement of the original 3 plus 1 added in. Okay, so that's how 2's complement works. If we look at these numbers now in terms of the, uh, rep the possible bit patterns that we can have in 4 bits from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, You'll notice that for the first uh, seven numbers, the positive values, signed and unsigned numbers are exactly the same. But now for unsigned, we continue on to 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 15, while for signed representations, the value that would have been 8 now corresponds to minus 8, and the value that would have been 15 corresponds uh, to minus 1. Now, of course, both signed and unsigned integers have limits. There's only so far we can go until we run out of patterns to use.
So for example, if we tried to add uh, 6 plus 4, the result would be 10. And we could not represent that as a sign number. There's just not enough bits to do that. You notice that there is no pattern that corresponds to the number 10. If they were unsigned numbers, we could, because we have a pattern of 10 for 10. Uh, in C, we also use the notation 15u to signify an unsigned number. In this case, 15u plus 2u yields 17, and that would not fit into any of our representations, signed or unsigned. Okay, we can also have a number that is too small. For example, minus 7 minus 3 unsigned would yield, uh, as signed numbers would yield minus 10, and you'll notice that there is no pattern for minus 10. We only get up to, uh, to minus 8. And then if they were unsigned, uh, we still have a problem because 0 unsigned minus 2 would be a negative 2. Well, we can't represent negative numbers in unsigned uh, format, so we'd be in trouble there as well. So the CPU, uh, when, it's get, when it's given this kind, these kinds of arithmetics to do, uh, will throw an exception, meaning it will signal that it uh, got a number that it can't represent. Uh, and it does that for signed values, but most CPUs do not do this for unsigned values. And C and Java, both languages, will just cruise along and not bother checking that the arithmetic was correct or not. So you have to do an explicit check if you really want to know uh, if uh, the, the arithmetic uh, worked out correctly. And we'll see that again later on. All right, just a quick visualization of what is going on here. If we start off with a two's complement number that can go from minus 2 to the w minus 1 to plus 2 to the w minus 1, when we uh, move it to an uh, unsigned value or represent it as an unsigned value, of course, those positive values stay the same, but the negative numbers now look like big positive values. Okay? And similarly, going in the other direction, if we start with an unsigned number, the smaller numbers can just move straight across the two's complement notation, but the large positive numbers, the ones that start with that leading one, now get interpreted as negative numbers if we think of the representation as two's complement. So we have to remember uh, which type of number we have in memory. Is it a two's complement number or is it an unsigned uh, integer? And that's part of how we get into types in these different languages. Uh, data types in these different languages. Here we're showing the addition of two numbers can, uh, can yield a, a value that's very negative or a value that's very positive. Uh, the values, again, that are in the mid-range can just move straight along, no problem, to the two's complement representation. But the very large positive numbers get interpreted as negatives. The very large negative numbers end up getting interpreted as big positives. Okay, so uh, that's where we would run into trouble in our arithmetic if we generate too large a number or too negative a number. Okay, some values to remember uh, when we're thinking about uh, integers is for unsigned values, uh, we have a special value called u min, which is the smallest number we can represent. That's zero, the bit pattern of all zeros, and the maximum u max is a uh, the unsigned max is all ones, obviously, and that would correspond to the 2 to the w minus 1. While in 2's complement, uh, t min is, 2's complement minimum is the biggest negative number we can have, which would be the pattern of 1 all zero, followed by all zeros. And then t max is a 0 followed by all ones. So the maximum number is only half as big as it was for the unsigned values. And a negative one is represented by the sequence of all ones, FFFFF, if we were doing 32 bits. Okay, so for a word size of 16, we would see these values uh, for U max, T max, and uh, T min. Uh, these would be the hex representations of them and their binary representations.